AD, just taking this uh, this loss to Denver in context with you know coming off the trip and the three game winning streak. Oh, where do you feel like you're at now? With the trade deadline's over. You know what the team's going to be. Uh, where do you still have to improve? And and you know how do you feel about uh, where you're at right now? Um, I think first we just got to get healthy. Maybe lose Max tonight. Um, no Vando, no D'Lo. Max goes out. No Cam. No Gabe. Um, so I think just getting healthy. But uh, the effort was there tonight. You had a lot of breakdowns. Um, for threes late in the game. Um, just breakdowns overall where they score it. But, um, you know, I like where we are as a unit. Um, I think they're just overall, we just got to get healthy. AD, hey, after it was tied at 104, where did it just go wrong for you guys after that point? Uh, missed shots and then the breakdowns. Um, had a breakdown. I was going to uh, Jokic, and he kicks it to corner in the corner for three. Uh, you know, Austin gambles. You know, which I get still another three. Michael Porter. So um, another breakdown. Peyton Watson gets the <clears throat> the back cut dunk. Um, LeBron has to rebound. Slips out his hand. You know, so I just. The little breakdowns that we had and um, just wasn't scoring on the offensive end. Thanks. AD, what was it like for you over these last 48 hours or so um, as the team and the NBA is nearing the deadline? Are, are you checking your phone? Is this something that you check in with your agent? Do you check in with the Lakers front office to see the activity? Or do you show up to work tonight and see everybody in the locker room and be like, okay, this is what we got? Um, It's hard not to uh, check. I mean, just on like Twitter and stuff like that, um, but or X. But uh, <laughs> but for the most part, I'm not, you know, really checking or things like that. Uh, we got three kids at home, so I don't really have time to just be on my phone like that. But um, if something was happening, the front office usually calls me, you know, or send a text, RP, and just uh, tell me what's going on. Uh, you know, no news. So I figured nothing was probably going to happen. But, um, I mean, this is our team. You know, this is our team, what we're going to have. And, uh, like I said, once we get guys healthy, um, you know, we kind of get back into our groove. But uh, very, very, you know, winnable game tonight. Uh, you know, down the stretch just kind of hurt us. And then uh, you know, we got another one you know, with another tough team coming in here tomorrow. AD, uh, what, one of the, the themes in the matchups with Denver has been a lot of talk about the two-man game with, with Jokic and Murray. And a lot of times you guys kind of know what they're running, but it's still difficult to, to stop. Um, Austin mentioned tonight it felt like the last few minutes they were just running the same action over and over again. Uh, how difficult is that to contain and what do you feel like you guys can learn from the way that it went in crunch time tonight, kind of moving forward when you guys play these guys again? Yeah, um, we'll, go, we'll go back and watch it and um, kind of see. But I think the easiest thing just off the top of my head to do is just switch everything and keep the ball in front. Um, obviously, that will put a smaller guy um, on Jokic. Uh, and so it kind of puts us in rotations unless, you know, you know, we put Bron on Murray, and then now it's, you know, Bron on Jokic at the end when we switch it. But, um, you know, they kind of get to, like, this page of action, uh, fourth quarter that they always run. They don't, run. they don't run through the entire course of the game into the fourth quarter. Um, so we just got to be uh, more disciplined. Uh, like I said, I think we guarded it pretty well, but we had a lot of breakdowns where they were able to manipulate, uh, <clears throat> you know, our defense and, make us pay for our breakdowns. Uh, obviously, Jamal hit a tough shot over Bron, and then, like I said, the one Bron fumbled and they scored on. So, um, for the most part, I think we were solid defensively, but um, fourth quarter, uh, especially late fourth quarter, uh, we just got to be better on you know, defensively. Hey, this is a little bit of a, a bigger picture question, but when teams talk uh, about kind of, you know, the future and different things like that, so often players you know, I mean, the 2027 first round pick doesn't really mean anything because guys aren't on teams till 2027. Um, you're under contract. Um, 
with this team for a long time. Is, is it hard to sort of balance the big picture sort of health and, and like it might not make sense to do something today if we can do something bigger tomorrow versus sort of the immediate gratification of like maybe there's a way to get a little bit better now, if that makes sense at the trade deadline. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's obviously <clears throat> for the front office to decide and, you know, what's best for our team currently and for the future. Um, you know, my job is to go out there and play uh, with whatever, you know, guys are on the team. Um, I don't really get in, too involved in 2027, 20, 28, 29, you know, you know, my focus is on like right now. Um, I'm just glad that it's over. Uh, you know, it can, can it can kind of get a little, you know, wacky around trade deadline time. You know, guys hearing their name and rumors and uh, is this going to happen, is this not going to happen? And um, it can kind of get, you know, like I said, wacky for guys. And, you know, so I'm just glad it's over and, you know, we are who we are. Uh, we have who we have, and this is going to be our team. And now, you know, it's behind us, and now we figure out how to get some more wins and move up in the standings. AD, you just said it yourself. You guys have what you have. You are who you are. Um, once you guys do get healthier, do you feel like you have you guys have a grasp on what needs to happen so you can get to that higher level of play consistently that you guys are striving for? Yeah, I mean, you know, when we move the basketball, when we are healthy, when we move the basketball, uh, play for each other, play together, and compete defensively, uh, how we did tonight and um, through the course of this, you know, three-game winning streak that we had before tonight, um, and the games that we showed that we can be a great defensive team, we're a tough team to beat. Um, it's tough, you know, when we don't have a lot of our guys, uh, but when we are healthy and we get back right, get back whole. Um, you know, we play Lakers basketball, you know, and that's high assist games, um, getting to the line, playing in transition, and playing defense. And uh, we do those those things. Uh, it usually turns out good for us. Hey, D, with you and Braun mostly healthy and playing at such a high level right now, considering Braun obviously is in his 21st season and nearing the sunset of his career, how much pressure do you feel to bring him another championship? Um, I mean, I think we all want to win. Uh, I don't think that we were looking at, like, for us right now, it's just about winning the next game. Um, you know, we can't look too far ahead in the future, you know. Obviously, that's the end goal is to win uh, every year. Um, but it's a lot of things that we have to clean up before uh, you know, we even think about competing for a championship. So. Uh, you know, obviously our organization is used to championships. Um, you know, I think everyone in the locker room wants to win a championship. But like I said, it's a, one about staying healthy. But then, too, it's a lot of, you know, things that we need to clean up on the floor, on both ends of the floor, uh, before, you know, we're able to start talking about championships. LeBron, there's a lot going on today. Uh, Kobe statue, of course. Um, Trade deadline passes coming off the Grammy trip. What what did you see with the game itself, though, with Denver and kind of where things turned uh, late as they got to that two man game? Um, I mean, they made shots, they right. executed. Um, you know, definitely had a. <clears throat> it wasn't just a two man game; it was a more of a, a three man uh, game. But you know, obviously, the ball always ends up in Joker and Murray's hands, and they, uh, you know, I mean, when we tied the game up, they made. Uh, two big threes, one from uh, Michael Porter Jr. right across from our bench when we tied the game. And then uh, Maul hit one as well uh, behind the screen. So um, they made more plays offensively than us and uh, was able to win the game. LeBron, if this group um, gets some good luck with its health that it's eluded, thus far eluded it um, for two thirds of the season, what's it going to take if you have all the guys to? make the push to get you to a good position come the start of the postseason? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. We haven't, haven't gotten that point. So it's hard for me to, to, to say. LeBron, uh, Austin mentioned that it felt like they kept running the same action, oh, uh, same action kind of over and over again uh, over the last few minutes of the game. Um, how difficult is their offense to contain in crunch time when they are running the same play? You guys know what they're running, and they still are executing at that level. Um, 
uh, very good teams. They have a, an, op, uh, an ability to run plays um, late in the game that they haven't ran all, all game, you know, and, uh, you know, and have certain packages that they know they can go to where they can get a really good shot. Um, but it makes it even more dynamic when you have a point guard and you have a center as great as uh, Ma and, and Jokic. So it definitely helps, it helps the play calls when you have those two guys. LeBron, when you have so much going on, like the Kobe statue, trade deadline, and you have these guys to play, how hard is it to get everything you have put into it and leave that behind? No, it wasn't hard. It wasn't hard for me. Um, personally, I went through my regular game day routine and focused on the job at hand. I knew the, the opponent that was coming in. I knew he was coming off a 12-day, game, a 12 day, six game road trip. It was going to be difficult on us, but you know, once you get on the floor, you have to you have to lock in on the assignment. That's, that's all that matters. LeBron, how much of a difference maker has Jackson's energy been over this past week, week and a half? Um, his, his energy, his athleticism um, definitely helps us for sure. LeBron, kind of along those questions, the trade deadline comes and, and goes and your roster doesn't change. How, how much uh, is it going to be on internal growth? Um, you know, guys like Jackson figure out optimizing him, um, optimizing Max and, and kind of these emerging players on this team as you guys over this next month um, try to figure this out. Just health. Max went down today, didn't return to the game. So our, our whole year has been about health. Jackson, a two for you. First, just the can you take us through the play where they got the chase down block, like where you saw that you might have an ability to catch it and, and kind of what was going through your head? Uh, honestly, I didn't even see him until I don't even know who threw it, but somebody threw it up. I think it was Jamal threw it up, and then I just had to bust my butt back and try to get a block. I'm sure you were frustrated with the loss, but your role certainly increased uh, with, with that group. At times, you were playing, uh, you know, almost three on the perimeter, and then getting back and playing inside. Uh, what? How did you feel like that evolved, and, and what's uh, what's it been like for you, seeing your minutes increase and your role increase lately? Uh, just all about staying ready, really. Uh, when I started my third year at NOLA, that's what was pretty much my role was what I did today, and so I mean, just kept trying to stay ready and impact the game. Jackson, uh, you guys tied the game at 100 with about 3.44 left. Uh, then they went on a 12-4 run over the next couple of minutes. What did you see during that stretch that you, know, you guys have been playing so well up to that point and then they kind of distanced themselves? Uh, just breakdowns. I mean, uh, just mental breakdowns, going for gambles, uh, missing rebounds. Uh, I mean, also they're a really good team, so I mean they're going to make you pay every time you make a mistake. So we just made a few little crucial mistakes, and they capitalized on those mistakes. Jackson, you brought an urgency to your play ever since you got the call up in Boston, and um, obviously you've been able to replicate it, um, you know, a handful of times since then. Do you feel like that has rubbed off on the group at all, or or not necessarily even taking ownership for rubbing off on it? Do you feel a uptick in the urgency of this group, considering where you are and how much season's left? Uh, most definitely. Uh, all of us know what time of year it is, and all of us know we need to lock in and get some more wins out here, and um, yeah, just make that playoff push. So I mean, I feel like there's a sense of urgency from all of us. Hey, Jackson. So just curious, when you talk about that last three minute stretch, just how frustrating is it knowing that the game was right there, but it just kind of slipped away and there was really nothing you can do after that? Uh, definitely very frustrating. Um, I mean, like a close loss like that, you make a good push there at the end. It's always frustrating, but uh, I mean, we just got to do a little, a little more stuff better. And uh, that's really all we can do. Oh. Hey, um, the team kind of struggled offensively in the first half, but things improved in the second half. What was the biggest uh, change between the halves that allowed the team to get back in the game? Uh, I don't know. I would honestly just say the sense of urgency like we were talking about. Um, we just kind of sensed coming into the locker room that we were a little down, and we all looked at each other and said, come on, we got to turn it up, and then that was that. Thanks, guys. Austin, awesome. you, you're pretty familiar with those actions that Denver runs after the Western Conference Finals last year. What What's the difficulty of it on the floor and how they were able to execute? And the, the kind of at times it seemed like despite defensive effort, uh, they were able to get what they were wanting. 
Oh uh, yeah, I mean they gotta play. Uh, they good that they go to, you know, strictly end the game fourth quarter when they need a bucket and uh, I feel like we competed to guard it and you know they got a couple tough buckets and then uh, yeah they got good players. Austin, you had that that one sequence at the end where Jokic had the ball, you went for the strip and he. You barely missed it, and then he finds MPJ in the corner. Uh, what, what did you see on that play and kind of that, that, that gamble and then the calculation that went into it and I guess how close you were to actually knocking the ball loose? Yeah, honestly, I thought I had it. Um, obviously not. Uh, and, you know, was, you know, they kept running the same play, him catching it in the same spot, and I seen it a couple possessions before that, and I seen it again. And, you know, I thought it was a good opportunity to go, you know, um, you know, try to make a winning play. And obviously, you know, that shot me in the foot. Um, you know, I just need to be more solid uh, right there. But, I don't know, it is what it is. And, you know, we'll, uh, or I'll, you know, learn from it and get better. Austin, uh, noon uh, Pacific came and went without the team making any changes. How would you describe the energy, connectiveness, spirit of, of the group coming into tonight's game, knowing you guys are all you got? Ah, it's great, you know. It's, you know, basically been the same thing all year. You know, the, the vibe's been good. Um, and, you know, now just having that, knowing that, you know, this is what we got, you know, maybe add a piece so, um uh, the guys that aren't, you know, on a contract right now or got bought out. Um, but like I said, this is, you know, what we have and uh, we're confident in that and we've just got to keep building that, you know, togetherness on the court. Hey, Austin, I have two for you. Um, one, you, you were able to get to the the Kobe statue unveiling. Um, knowing what he meant to you as a kid, what was it like to be in there? Um, see kind of that stage of people speak and, and why was it important for you to kind of change your routine to make sure you saw it? I mean, basically what you said, uh, you know, he was an idol to me. You know, I grew up a Laker fan, uh, obviously a big Kobe fan. And, you know, showing up, you know, just showing my appreciation for what, you know, he meant to not just me, but the game of basketball. and. Um, you know, I got some friends from back home that are here that were able to, you know, attend as well. And just, you know, overall, you know, sharing that experience with everybody was, you know, super cool. And, you know, I was like a kid in a candy shop in there. I couldn't stop smiling, um, you know, seeing the people that spoke on behalf of him uh, with all the great things, obviously. But, yeah, it was, a, it was an amazing, you know, experience for me. You, you mentioned Denver kind of going to the same action, the same play, like they're kind of go get a bucket play. Um, do you feel like you guys have found that version of that for you guys, or is that not really? I mean, you guys have great these great individual kind of one-on-one players. Is that kind of how you guys attack those moments? Uh, I think a lot of things go into you know those specific moments. Uh, you know, with the personnel that we have, uh, there was a play that we, you know, ran multiple times tonight that, you know, got Braun in the pocket and was something that was working for us that we continue to go back for. But I think, you know, with the, um, you know, personnel that we have uh, and the skill sets that we have, you know, that kind of changes um, with, you know, how the game is being played. Darvin, did you sense a similar feel to some of the playoff games you had in the Western Conference Finals where you just uh, got down early, made a run, and just couldn't quite get over the top? And what, if so, what do you think accounted for that? I mean, you, a team like that, man, they're a really good ball club, obviously defending champs. You make any – I mean, we did a great job for the most part taking care of the ball. Uh, but every turnover, <laughs> the seven, they have, still have 15 points off our seven turnovers. Um, I think it was five turnovers, 12 points at halftime. So that improved in the second half. Uh, they shift a lot. They try to take away the paint. Um, I felt like a lot of times we weren't shot ready or shot aggressive when, when uh, the ball got kicked out from the paint. And then again, you know, you make any mistake, they're going to make you pay. Uh, 
they come up with a loose ball, they get offensive rebound. It doesn't matter, man. They, they, they're a well-oiled machine. Um, 21 second chance points. So it's one of those nights where you just, you know, you plan against a team like this, you got to be hitting on all cylinders. But at all that said, I'm extremely proud under the circumstances coming off this long trip, facing an opponent like that, the way our guys competed, um, the way they gave multiple efforts. You know, Jackson's chase down block. I, I can go through a, a long list of plays that our guys made that just were ultra competitive. And um, as long as we keep doing that, think good things are happening for us. D Darvin, you guys tied the game, uh, I think, 344 left at 100 100. Then they go on a 12 4 run to, to kind of, you know, make, make that distance over the, the last couple of minutes. Um, did, did it feel like shades of the Western Conference Finals at all? Where I'm not all even thinking about the Western Conference Finals, man. It's 2023 24. 2024 to be exact. I'm not, it's a whole new world, whole new everything, whole new season, whole, whole new time of the year. Like, what happened last year happened last year. We ain't worried about that. We're trying to be the best team we can be right now and in, in the moment, in the here and now. Darwin, there were a couple of stretches that, that jumped to mind where it seemed like they were able to create like just the right shot at the right moment. Um, tight at the end of the first quarter, and I think they create off of pick and rolls two really clean looks at three. That stretch you have mentioned, you know, they get a couple open looks, they get a dunk. Um, does that speak to kind of their their system and their comfortability? And is that kind of what you guys are aspiring still towards as you kind of work with your continuity? Absolutely. It, it, it specifically speaks to Jokic and Murray. It speaks to them and obviously, you know, Jeff Green's not there anymore. Bruce Brown's not there anymore. Um, they're very well coached. Uh, speaks to the attention those guys draw. And uh, those guys just being patient, knowing that they're going to make sure if they're double team or triple team, the ball's going to find the right open person. And, uh, you know, we're able to do that too. Again, when our guys draw those same same crowds, we just we can't hes hesitate or be indecisive. We got to take open shots. We can't, you know, hold it, pause for a second. And, you know, we had some good redrives, but I felt like a, couple, a few of those redrives could have been threes. Darwin, one of the challenges of the first two thirds of the season was the in and out nature of, of the lineup because guys getting hurt and then you're trying new pieces. And um, could there be another challenge if, you know, someone like Jackson, right? He's emerged over this stretch, but then you get healthy and then you're dealing with a different type of lineup situation. You understand what I'm saying? Like the, the, the challenge of being whole. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really challenging now because we have Vando down, we're waiting on Cam, and, and Max just went down tonight. So it's, I mean, it, it's until we do get hold, I, I, I welcome that challenge. <laughs> you know, to have bodies available, I welcome that challenge. You know, our guys, seems like, you know, we get someone playing in a great rhythm, someone is emerging, getting better. You know, Vando was rounding out in the form of, of his former self and even exceeding that. He goes down. Max getting comfortable in the rotation, playing aggressive, playing good basketball, tweaks his ankle tonight. So the biggest thing is not to get discouraged, not get disappointed, um, not feel sorry for yourself. We just got to figure it out and salute to Skyler and Jackson, those guys being ready to play. You know, Rui's going to have to do more. C. Wood is going to have to do more. Our, guard, our, our AR, TP, everybody who's available along with Brown and AD, you know, we're just going to have to figure this thing out. Darvin, uh, just you brought them up. Uh, D'Lo and Max, any update on them or any word on uh, what's going on with them? Well, we'll know something further tonight. And then with Jackson, just how much did you feel like his energy raised the collective energy of the team? He's on the floor. It's great. That's what he does. And he's playing really solid basketball right now, really good discipline basketball. Um, his, his, his motor, man, is, is like none other. Um, he, he he got us a couple of extra possessions. That chase down block was huge um, down the stretch. And, you know, it's just the joy he brings to the game, that positive energy, that high-level energy is definitely infectious. Darvin, given the injuries, um, you know, that continue to kind of happen, um, what would you say, you said before the, the game that you, you were using this game as like a, a progress report. 
Um, how would you evaluate that given uh, kind of where we are now? I mean, throughout the basic tenets of, you know, being competitive, giving multiple efforts, having the next play mentality, guys playing for one another, I give it an A+. Plus. Now, you, you know, you never want to be comfortable with losing. Uh, we need to win as many games down the stretch as possible. But having said all of that, I love the spirit that's within our group right now. Um, and again, everybody is fighting their butts off. Everyone is, is, is holding the line, uh, trying to cover for one another and playing on selfish basketball. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.